Hi everybody, welcome to another holy how-to. Uh, this this how-to is, is going to show you how I painted the marble flooring for the ruined temple city of Sigmar table. Um, in the video, you're going to see me using the uh, dryer sheet texture and then uh, how I painted up the grout lines and the cracks in the marble. Um, there's one point in the video where I I decided to, uh, well, you'll see it. I marked it. I said, yeah, I lied. I said I wasn't going to paint it all up, but I actually did. So uh, if you if you want to view it to the end, you'll get to see how I painted up the entire tall block in these still shots you're seeing. Um, as I get more uh, content ready, I will generate some more videos for you. Um, and I hope you enjoy this one. Thanks for watching. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another Holy How To. Today I'm going to show you how I do the marble texturing I'm doing for the ruined Temple City of Sigmar table for Holy Havoc. And these are going to be those marble platforms. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what you see here is one that has the first layer of uh, texture applied to it. Okay. And what I'm using to do this, these, this texture technique is I'm using um, dryer sheets, um, just used dryer sheets. Um, and what I do is I pull them apart a little bit to create gaps and holes in the dryer sheet And that's what I use as my mask So what I'm doing here what I'm trying to achieve here with this is to build this up so it looks more like white marble So um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do that. Okay um, I'm using white acrylic ink for the um, For the paint and let me show you how I do that. So with this technique, uh, it's real easy and really pretty much pretty straightforward. Uh, you just lay in your uh, paint over the actual texture, uh, the, excuse me, the dryer sheet. The dryer sheet acts as a mask. And you can see that <clears throat> where it's picking up more, uh, more white. Now, and more texture, more veining. So one of the things I'd like to do with this technique is to mix up the dryer sheets. I have I have several of them that I use, and I look for areas that I feel need a little bit more pop or a little bit more white, and I hit those areas to bring it out even more. Now, moving the sheet around, moving the 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 dryer sheet around, which is the mask, will create different textures, and different levels of opacity on the texture of the marble. So what you could see is you really start to develop some unique looking um, um, shapes inside the marble in areas where I think it needs a little bit more, I'll just slap it on and there you go. Okay, so this is, the sh this is a real simple, quick technique to use. Um, it's building up the layers. <clears throat> this was all primed in black. So I'm just building up the layers slowly to the point of, uh, to a point of opaqueness that I like. All right, so what I'll do is I'll show you another one on the side here. So we have this here. So you can see here, that there's not a lot of white applied to this yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a different dryer sheet and I'll show you how it goes. And I just lay it in on the top, oh, need to, Refill. So I'm going to refill with my paint. Okay. And you can see that creates a really cool texture. Now I'm not pushing it down super super uh, firmly on to the uh, to the uh, to this brick. I'm just lightly laying it there so I can create. Um, the uh, the mask, so I can allow the mask to do the work. If you push too hard, sometimes what happens, uh, you'll get a buildup of paint, and then you might not get the desired effect you're looking for if it's pressed down too hard. Sometimes uh, when you pull the mask back, it might release some of the paint. <clears throat> now, this one here has a lot of, there's a lot going on in here, so I'm not really digging that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually lay in more white uh, with a different type of mask that has a little bit more, uh, it's a little bit more open. So there we go. 
I'm, though I like that a lot better. And then laying in that corner there, get some white there. So you can see here how there, how there isn't a good blend. There's not a good transition here. So I'm going to fix that <clears throat> by laying in some more white. Now, in this circumstance, um, it looks like... So what I'm going to do is just hit it with some air, try and dry it a little bit. And then I'm just going to hit it with some regular paint without any uh, texture, without any mask applied. Now I'm going to come back into it with a mask. And there you go. Even I, I like that a lot better. Okay, so this technique, like I said, it's real simple. Uh, it's very forgiving. You can you can create a lot of interesting texture, lots of deep marble effect, and you can do it with just about any color. Okay, and um, just by laying the mask over and lightly hitting it with your airbrush is going to create some real cool effects. Boom! Wow, that looks really cool really like that one. Let's try and bring some more white in on the corner. There we go. It's really taking shape. It's a real fast technique. Um, it doesn't, it really, really, um, it's, like I said earlier, it's very forgiving and you can create some really interesting effects. All right. So I've got a whole bunch more I have to do. Uh, so that's our holy how-to on how I start off doing these, this marble technique. I will be showing more um, uh, more videos uh, real soon on how I touch it up with uh, painting the grout lines and uh, distressing the marble so it has cracks in it and vein, uh, a little bit. Sometimes I put in some more veins, but I try to let the airbrush do most of the work when it comes to creating the texture. But uh, yeah, so uh, good luck in all the projects you do, and I'm going to go sling more paint. Thanks. Hi, I'm back. Um, what I'm going to show you now is how I created the veining and the grout work for the marble blocks, which I'm using for the ruined temple city of Sigmar table for Holy Havoc. And earlier in the video, I showed you how I airbrushed the texture, okay? So using the dryer sheets and my airbrush, I was able to create this marbleized texture on these blocks. Now the next step is, the next step is to bring it to life. And the way I bring it to life is by going over those indentations I made when I distressed the marble floor. And I'm going to accent them by using um, Payne's Gray ink. Now, the, um, <clears throat> the, te the technique here is really, really straightforward. Um, I'm essentially going to follow all of the lines um, that I had put into the block. Now, it's probably hard to see here on camera, but when the light hits it a certain way, I can see the indentations pretty easily. Um, so here, why don't I get started? So the first step is to go ahead and do the grout line. So it's real simple and straightforward. Using a very a hairline sized brush, I just go right through the grout line like so with the ink. And I'm not going to do the whole thing for you um, because I think that might just be boring. <laughs> I'm just painting lines after all. So let's do, let's finish this line off and then I'll show you how I do the cracks. So one of the cool things about doing the distressing when I did, it creates an indentation in the board which allows your brush to slide down pretty easily, giving you a relatively straight line. Obviously it's taking on the contours of the what the tool, the, the texture that the tool created. There are some parts where the board distressed a little bit more, creating a little bit more of a, uh, a little bit more graininess to it. Um, those areas of grout have a more distinct look, but it just gives it a look like it's broken through time. Now you want to make sure you wick off a little bit of the, the ink, just like so. Okay, 
So I, I will do the others, but let me show you how I do the distressing. Now this is a real simple technique. It's using the same hairline brush, same Payne's Gray ink, and then I'm gonna find one of those distress lines. Now you probably will not be able to see it on camera, but I can see one sitting right in here, and it's gonna go down the contour. So what I do is I take the edge of the brush, and I just bring it down following that line and then making any alterations that I think I want to make along the way. And it's applying very little pressure, okay? And then I take a look and find it in the light. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna put in a line here to break this tile up. Oh, that's off camera. So what I'm doing here is to make it look like there's a break in the tile and that this little piece here is, has been separated from that other tile. All right, pretty cool. And then I'll go in and do the rest of these, looking for those lines. Let's see, there's one in here. And then I'll drag across, adding a little bit more pressure to create a little bit more depth in the crack. And this, this technique is very similar to the other techniques um, that I've shown and that there's really no right way or wrong way. It's really, it really comes down to the rule of cool and whatever you like. So if you, like, if you would like to see a crack that has a little bit more intensity or if you wanted to see more uh, broken up pieces of marble. That's all up to you. Put a little bit more of a broken area in here. Okay, so now I'm going to keep going and uh, finish these out. One more to go, and then I can show you how I do the squares. So for the squares, <clears throat> okay. So you see here, I wanted there to be um, black squares in here. Now, I haven't decided how much veining I'm going to do, additional veining I'm going to do. Now, this technique is a real simple watercolor technique, uh, very common. It's basically, it's basically like a wash, okay? So I'm going to take a little bit of a little bit of water, a wet brush, and a little bit of Payne's Gray as well. And what I'm just going to do, I'll get this in camera for you, is I'm just going to go ahead and plop this paint down and move my brush a little bit. Get it down on there. There we go. I'm just going to go ahead and dab it through, like so. And what's kind of cool about this is it's just like any other wash. It's picking up that um, those cracks I put into the tile that I missed. Okay. Now, what I like to do with this is while it's wet, I will go ahead and hit it with a little bit of water just to create. What the water helps to do is it helps to break it up a little bit. Gives me a nice sh a shade that I like. Once again, rule of cool applies, whatever you like. You 
Now this is a board, it's a tabletop surface. Miniatures are gonna be going all over this thing. So I have to always tell myself that this is not, I'm not painting this for competition. I'm not painting this for, um, um, for my army per se. It's a table, right? It's terrain. Uh, so I don't have to be crazy with it, but I tend to tend to overanalyze. I really love the way this is looking right here. So I think I'm gonna leave that and see how that dries. That's some nice looking texture. What's happening there is the, the white that I airbrushed on is coming through this wash and it's creating a really cool stone effect here on this black marble. Somebody asked me one time, do I always wear a rubber glove when I'm, when I'm painting? And um, a lot of times I do use a rubber glove because I have a tendency to touch the surface with my hand, the hand that's holding. Even when I'm using a, um, oddly enough, even when I'm using a painting handle, I'll have a tendency to touch the model. So the oils of my skin will, oh, I like the way that's looking. The oils of my skin will come off and you get on the model and then pull paint away. So yeah, so I, I typically do uh, wear the glove on my left hand, uh, especially when I'm doing terrain projects, like something like this, where it is, um, obviously I can't use a paint handle. Um, I will have a tendency to glove my left hand. Okay, so I kind of like the way that's looking too. Um, so now you can see it goes really quick, um, real quick. Um, we're gonna see how this dries. Um, we'll see how much blue is in there. I got a feeling I'm gonna have to add a little bit of intensity over in this area down here, um, and maybe a little bit up in here. But that's a quick down and dirty way that I do these. Uh, oh, look at that. I got a little bit of a piece here I gotta fix because uh, my hands are too wet. So what I'm gonna do to fix that is I'm gonna make that into a crack. So let's let me show you how I do that. So this is gonna be a chipped piece of marble and all I'm gonna do is make this look like it was chipped by just coming in here like this. And I'm gonna add a, line, a crack line coming out from here like so. I guess you could say I'm kinda of Bob Ross in it right now, right? Happy accidents, I believe was his what he used to say. Yeah, that works. <clears throat> yeah, I think that works. Okay, cool. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do more veining in this and get the rest of this thing done. Uh, just by following those lines that I put in. Um, not veining, I'm sorry. This is actually the cracks. The hairline cracks in the marble. Uh, same technique can be used for veining. Um, it's the exact same technique. Um, you're just doing multi, multi wet blending when you vein. At least that's what I do when I do the veining. Let me get the camera for you. Let me hit the sides here, these side grout lines. And this two level level block. This one's two inches high. And there's some grout lines between the big, or I should say, mortar lines. Right. I don't know. Maybe they would use. Maybe it was a grout. I don't know. Not a mason. about six of these to do. So this, like I said, you could also use, you use a hairline brush, like I said, and then the other thing you could do, and I almost did it, I almost filled my rapidograph pens. Those are, um, those are great um, pens that I have um, from my drafting days. Um, 
and I could have filled them with this Payne's Gray ink and lined them with the pens. But um, I chose to do it with the brush. So. So like I said, real fast, real simple. The good thing about using the Payne's Gray ink is that it's very thin. Um, I added a little bit of water to it to make it just slightly a bit more transparent to let the colors beneath it come through a little bit because I like the way that looks. Oh, and I got a, thumb, a thumbprint right there. Let's fix that real fast. That's what you get for moving too quick. But when you're on a deadline for an event, sometimes you have to just take the risk of screwing it up. And we'll see how that dries. See if that works well. Um, there is something to be said for, for moving a little slower, but um, like I said earlier, I am on a major time crunch here. Um, need to try to get the table done as soon as possible so that we can continue our play testing for the scenario. Um, this table is going to be very fun to play on. Players are going to have a very um, unique game of Age of Sigma on this table. It's going to probably feel, for those of them that have played Warcry, it's going to feel, or Mordheim, it's probably going to feel a little bit like that because of the, the nature of the table and how it's a town, it's a ruined temple city, so it's going to be kind of, it's going to be an interesting experience for sure, and um, we're still playtesting the scenario. So anyway, uh, here we go. Looks pretty good. Looks definitely solid. I'm digging the way it's looking. Still have to work out what I'm going to do here. I'm not 100% sure. I'm on the fence. This is what my test piece looked like early on. This actually, um, I liked it, but it really had a feeling of granite as opposed to marble. Um, but I do like the way this was turning out down here. So I might throw in some veining like that. I'm not 100% sure yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get all of them done, all the bricks laid out and done like this. Um, so then that way... Um, um, I can make a decision later um, when we uh, start laying the whole thing out. There'll be other things to do. I have some more distressing I need to do on this on this brick here, but that's it. So that's the holy how-to on how I created the marble texture, how I did the veining, um, the paint that was used was white acrylic ink and uh, the Payne's Gray acrylic ink. Uh, good luck in all your projects, and uh, I'll try to get another video up soon.